talking about this week. And I want to go ahead and bring in the Sunday Brain Trust, Angela Rye, former executive director of the Congressional Black Caucus, director of Impact Strategies, Bob Franken, of course, a syndicated columnist for King Features, and Peter Suderman, senior editor for Reason Magazine. Good to see all three of you on a Sunday. Come on, Craig. Hey, you know what, it, guys, and, and, and you guys have probably already seen this, but for our viewers at home who have not, I do want to go ahead and play a snippet of it before we start talking about it. This is that new uh, Cheerios commercial that was recently posted on its YouTube page. Mm. Yes, honey? Dad told me that Cheerios is good for your heart. Is that true? It says here that Cheerios has whole grain oats that can help remove some cholesterol, and that's heart healthy. Case. It's a uh, pretty clever commercial, I, I think. It's had nearly a million and a half views. Cheerios had to pull that thing, had to pull the, the comment page because of a string of racist comments. Angela Rye, let me start with you. Does this reflect uh, on our attitudes toward race or does it reflect on, on just Internet users' attitudes about race? Well, Craig, we know that racism is still alive and well in America. Um, what that commercial demonstrates to me and I think to maybe a lot of Americans is the fact that the American family and the construct of the American family is changing. So the fact that there is a biracial little girl, um, you know, talking to her mother and then trying to do something what appears to be nice and keeping her father healthy um, is a reality for a lot of us. Um, the unfortunate reality, again, is that racism is still alive and people will, you know, utilize every possible opportunity um, to demonstrate their racism. It's especially many of the cowardly uh, nuts who, who spend a great deal of their time being mean on the internet, I suppose, Absolutely. Bob. Uh, Bob, this, despite the, the internet backlash, the New York Daily News quotes a spokesman for the brand, General Mills, uh, consumers have responded positively to our new Cheerios ad. At Cheerios, we know there are many kinds of families and we celebrate them all. Bob, is, is this forward thinking by Cheerios and, and its parent, General Mills, are they going to benefit from this ad? Well, uh, paradoxically, they just might. You know, you have to comment that just when we thought we were beyond uh, something as evil as all this in the United States, we find that we haven't made as much progress as possible. Uh, also, paradoxically, I mean, this has been uh, caused quite a bit of impact for Cheerios, which is one of the things, of course, that any company that advertises wants to do. But if they are really brave, then they'll show a gay couple. And, and you know what, uh, Bob? I'm sure someone's probably working on that ad right now. Pete, I uh, don't bet on it yet. <laughs> really? You don't think so? You think that? No, I, I, I don't think we've come as far as we'd like to believe we have when it comes to that issue. Uh, Peter, multiracial families in this country have, have become quite commonplace. The census, the census data supports it every 10 years. Is this, is this a, a reminder, as Angela suggested, of, of, of the not too distant past, uh, where in some states? Interracial marriages were, were against the law not so long ago. I think it's actually a sign of what we can expect in the future. You know, I'd really love to see the market research that provided the uh, the backing, you know, the, for, for whatever ad exec or whatever brand manager made the decision to run this ad, because you've got to imagine that what they've decided, what they saw, was that there are enough people who are accepting of this and enough people who think it's perfectly normal, not even unusual in any way, that we're going to do better uh, by playing to them and by featuring their faces in our commercial uh, than by, you know, being, uh, doing the, the traditional, the, the, the thing that has uh, been done so often, which is uh, families in commercials that are, uh, you know, just a single race. You know, and so I think that's a good thing that we're seeing from Cheerios. You know, one of the things, guys, that, that really bothers me, and it's not just about this ad, again, this really, I think, speaks to a lot of the cowardly uh, bigots, the narrow-minded folks who spend a lot of time on the, the, the comment sections of, of a lot of websites and stories. And it, it really does, it, it really, it, it annoys me to know it, Angela Rye, because the Internet, it's free, it's anonymous, and, and, and folks who spend a lot of time on it like we do, you see this sort of thing a lot more often than you'd like to. 
There's no question about it. We call it e-courage. E um, I get I like more, that. more <laughs> tweets from people who are willing to call me out of my name in ways that would shame my parents. Um, and behind, you know, their He-Man or Skeletor images, and you know, it's always like angry conservative Christian those things don't even align to me so I don't understand how that works but you're right it's a huge problem and it's one that we definitely need to overcome and, and, and we've talked about this before Craig the good thing about the internet is it's available to everybody the bad thing about the internet is it's available to everybody <laughs> <For some. laughs> and, and I think I think that that that, uh, that is the dark side of what you get with an egalitarian internet yeah all right let's take a quick break let's reset when we come back we're gonna spend some time talking about Anthony Weiner in case you hadn't heard, he's running for mayor of New York City again. Uh, the latest polling shows that he's gaining some ground despite that Twitter scandal. But what's motivating some of his supporters? We're going to talk about that. You're watching MSNBC, the place for politics. The Brain Trust is back. Angela Rye from Impact Strategy, syndicated column Bob Franken, Reason Magazine's Peter Suderman. Bob, let me start with you. In case you hadn't heard, Anthony Weiner, he's running for mayor of Gotham City. Uh, there are some who think that the architect of the Weiner campaign, his wife, uh, Huma Abedin, close aide to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, this is what the New York Times has to say about her role. A surrogate daughter to Bill and Hillary Clinton, who has seen firsthand the cleansing power of campaigns, Miss Abedin has leapt into her husband's effort, conferring on strategy, helping to hire staff members from her long history with the Clintons. What do you think about this, Bob? Is this, is this more than a New York mayoral race? Well, no. <laughs> I think that uh, only in New York would you find this kind of uh, situation so soon after uh, the alleged offenses, that, not the alleged offenses, the offenses that Anthony Weiner uh, conducted. Uh, this is a guy who is going to be a unique uh, politician in New York as long as he stays in politics. For instance, he's been advancing in the polls, and some people attributed it to not just being in spite of his prickly personality, but because of it. I mean, this guy is never going to be a Mr. Congeniality, which is what New Yorkers seem to think they want. Peter, there has been some speculation uh, that, that some aides may have even joined the Wiener campaign to get closer to Huma Abedin and by extension Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. Does politics, does it really work like that at all? Oh, sure, people, uh, I, you know, whether or not it does in this instance, uh, unclear, uh, but it does, and people always want to be close to centers of power and to individuals who hold power and who can uh, give other people's power, and the Clintons are certainly a family that can do that, um, and the and Clintons are going to be a big force in democratic politics. I, I, you know, I have to say, uh, uh, just on the Wiener, uh, on Wiener's candidacy uh, in particular here, it's going to be really fun to watch, um, and Wiener <laughs> actually has an advantage, which is that you know what his big secret is. It's not yeah. a big secret. This is not somebody who has skeletons in his attic. His, his skeletons are out on the front lawn. And, and, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I guess to his credit, perhaps, to a certain extent, he's, he's embracing it. I mean, it's not like he's running from an Angela Ra. This is something that I did find particularly interesting. Maggie Haberman, uh, she was writing about the Wiener campaign in Politico last week. And she said, quote, it took only a few stops on the trail to make this much clear. The new Anthony Weiner bears an uncanny resemblance to the pugnacious, hard-charging Anthony Weiner of old. Uh, is, is the new post-scandal Weiner the same as the old Anthony Weiner, Angela Rye? He's the exact same, and because he's the exact same, the Marist poll says that 53% of New Yorkers want to give the same Anthony Weiner a second chance. Um, he's also, we've seen that he's gained some in the polls, um, running a close second to Christine Quinn at 19%. So time will only tell, but we know that New Yorkers continue to love um, their elected officials. We saw Elliot Spitzer, for example, who had a far worse scandal, at least some would argue, um, end up with a TV show. So he resigned his spot, but he still was in the line. Well, and we should point out that Christina Quinn is not exactly known as Miss Personality <laughs> right. uh, in, in New York, which, you know, let's, let's face it, that would cause a lot of people to conclude uh, something about New Yorkers in general. As a matter of fact, what are you about argue, to conclude, Bob? Well, I'm just going to say that either of them could probably work for the New York Hospitality Bureau. <laughs> let's take, let's take a, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, the Braid Trust. Bob, you know what I love about you, Bob? You do the same thing that President Obama does sometimes. When he says something funny, you beat the crowd to the laugh. Like You, you deliver the line, and you give the chuckle.
off the dump. I figure I'd better because maybe nobody else is going to. <laughs> sneak, sneak peeks on the other side of this break. This is MSNBC, the place for politics. All times. The Brain Trust is back. Angela Rye, Bob Frank, and Peter Suderman. This, folks, could be a very busy week. Congress, of course, returns. The Supreme Court could start issuing some long-awaited decisions. So, Brain Trust, what will your headlines for Congress and the Supreme Court look like this week? Peter Suderman, we will start with you, good sir. I, I think for Congress, it's going to be immigration reform proceeds as scandals loom. And I think for the Supreme Court, it's going to be uh, Supreme Court rules narrowly on affirmative action and same-sex marriage. Narrowly, narrowly in, in, in which way, Pete? I think uh, particularly with affirmative action, uh, what we're going to see is that the court, uh, the, the most likely, you know, this is always hard to predict, but the most sure. likely thing here is that the, the court's going to look for the smallest possible ruling, but it's going to be a conservative majority ruling, uh, uh, saying that this particular instance, this particular type of affirmative action uh, it may not be allowable anymore. Uh, Angela Rye, uh, let's, let's come to you for your headlines. What are we looking at? Sure, I think that we're going to see con Congress continue the gridlock. Um, meanwhile, the S Supreme Court will rule um, on that liberty and justice remains for some. Um, by that, I just mean that the Supreme Court will likely find um, that gay marriage is constitutional. I do not think that they will, well, it'll be very tough for them to uphold. Um, the affirmative action policies that so many of us continue to rely upon, particularly because folks continue to look at President Obama as the as the person who has elevated We've made race it. relations so far. Exactly, and everybody else is fine, which of course we know is not the case. Bob, before we get to your headlines, I want to pick up where Angela just left off, and it sounds like uh, Peter Sudman agrees as well. Do we think that the High Court is is going to effectively end affirmative action as we know it? Uh, yes, to the point that uh, in many institutions, they're already coming up with a different emphasis, with the emphasis being on economic deprivation as opposed to the, uh, the racial characteristics. And immigration reform, Bob, again, before we get to your headlines, what do you think happens with immigration reform this week? I mean, the, the markup starts. We're going to start to see uh, a, a little bit more, hopefully some more conversations specifically about the details in the legislation. Well, I think what we're going to see is more of a display of uh, the differences that still remain. I mean, people have been back in their districts, particularly the conservatives, and they've gotten an earful, and I think we're going to see that reflected in Congress. And now to your headlines. Okay, the House convenes, immediately celebrates the announcement by Michelle Bachman. What? Uh, <laughs> and, and the Supreme Court uh, ruling, the same Supreme Court that ruled that corporations have human rights, will rule that gays don't. Really? You think, yes. that, you think that the High Court manages to uh, sidestep this one? That, that, I think, is exactly the best result, which is that they sidestep it as opposed to ruling in the negative. Kick the can down the field. Uh, you, mm -hmm. the, the Michelle Bachman announcement, you th it's, we heard from Carl Rove this morning on ABC, I and mean, it sounds like they've, they've all just kind of goodbye, good riddance. Well, you know, and there are many people who would like to say the same thing to Carl Rove, but that's for a different time. <laughs> Angela Rye, you know, folks have been, you know, for the past few days, there have been a lot of folks who have said that, yeah, you know, we're, we're sad to see Michelle Bachman go, but for Democrats, uh, Michelle Bachman was probably their greatest shot at winning that seat. Yeah, Craig, you're absolutely right. I think, um, you know, folks were hoping that she would stay in the race, but I think that the writing was on the wall. I know she said it had absolutely nothing to do with the ethics challenges and investigations, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that she just barely won this seat. Um, but, in fact, it had everything to do with that, and um, Democrats certainly would have preferred her as an opponent. She is the best Pinocchio around here, per PolitiFact, and, um, and everything else. So I don't know what we're going to do without her being well, in the race. Peter, she wasn't that, I'm sorry, she wasn't that popular uh, with her colleagues. I mean, they thought of her as a hot dog. Now, remember, when uh, you're talking about politicians thinking one of their own is a hot dog. Okay, well, and before we get out of here, Peter Suderman, I, I always like to speak from the vantage point of, of, of a you know, journalist that, that from time to time we need things to talk about. And, and for that, she never disappointed. There was always something to talk about. We always need material. Peter Suderman. Well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Now, now we're going to have Anthony Weiner and his campaign to, to keep going for a while. You did say that. You noted that earlier. Angela Rye, Impact <laughs> Strategies, syndicated columnist Bob Frank, and Reason Magazine's Peter Suderman. Big thanks to all of you, and a thanks, big Frank. thanks to you as well. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday uh, afternoon with us. I'll be back next Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern Sunday as well. Ed Schultz is standing by. I wish I could show you his pre-show routine. 
you, you want, we can't show it to you, obviously, but he's, uh, he'll be with you on the other side of this break. Hey, Kevin. Still eating chalk for heartburn? Try new Alka-Seltzer fruit shoes. They work fat and heartburn.